What's happening guys, Randy Rector here, back at you with another one. And today we're gonna play some pedal steel riffs, but on the guitar. Let's do it. Have you guys ever had to play steel riffs before? And I don't mean playing pedal steel guitar, I mean playing pedal steel riffs on your electric guitar. It can definitely be a challenge. But two months ago I was playing with a band and they had said, hey, can you play steel riffs in this one song? And it wasn't really worth bringing out the pedal steel for one song. So I made a solo on steel and moved it to guitar. This is the solo that I played right here. And today we're gonna to learn that solo with tabs. Today's the first snowfall here in Canada and so every one of my neighbors is outside snow blowing right now. If you hear that, I do apologize, but let's start with an overview of how this instrument physically works. And I think that's a really important place to start because we can take our understanding of how it physically operates and move that to the guitar to hopefully replicate that sound much more accurately. Now there is a whole lot to cover with pedal steel. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep this to like 60 seconds or so. Wish me luck. Here we go. So we've got 10 strings. This is an E9 pedal steel with 10 strings. In my left hand, I have a bar, which is responsible for doing two things that you would on guitar, both fretting with your fingers, as well as acting as the fret, except we're doing it on the top of the string, not on the bottom of the string. You can see these strings are significantly off the fretboard. So we're using this to actually fret. Now this is gonna cover multiple strings at a time, and unless you're putting it on an angle, it's pretty much always covering one fret at a time. There are some advanced features you can do by turning it, that's not today. On the right hand here, we have two finger picks and we have one thumb pick. The right hand is responsible for plucking, which in pedal steel we call a grip, which basically refers to the combination of notes that you are plucking with your right hand. The right hand is also responsible for some muting with your fingers as well as palm muting. And down here we have the player's right foot, which controls a volume pedal. This is gonna help the articulation, so it, it sort of has a swell. As well, it's gonna let the instrument sustain for a lot longer by slowly increasing that volume pedal over time. On the player's left foot, we have three pedals, all of which control pitch that are gonna change different notes to bend up. We have knee levers up above, we have four knee levers. Those control pitches as well, some up, some down. It's very confusing. These knee levers and these pedals are tuned using this tuning matrix here on the side. And what's really important to note is that these pedals are tuned, so when you step on them, they're gonna go precisely from one note to another note. And that's a really important distinction to make because the pedal steel doesn't overbend or underbend. It's a very mechanical, precise bend from one note to another. So that's something that we can try to replicate on the guitar. So let's talk about the basics of pedal steel. I'm talking like day one, very first day with your pedal steel from a guitar player's brain. So let's take the bar, put it down, pluck some of the middle strings, and you get a chord. Let's think of this like a full bar chord starting on the low E string. So if we go up to the fifth fret, that's an A chord. And the fifth fret is an A on pedal steel as well. And to get a D chord or the four chord, we simply go down a string or up a string if you're talking about pitch, and we get a D. And on steel, you use pedals A and B to get from an A chord to a D chord. So A, D. And then to get back, you just let go. And that right there, that little toggle is basically the vast majority of the pedal steel sound. You hear that all the time, like. That's just using two pedals. Okay, let's jump into the riff that we're talking about today. So I'm gonna go to the second fret and I'm gonna press down pedals A and B to get from F sharp to B. And that's where we're gonna start. Now notice how, notice how tight those bends are. And then we're gonna go up to E And then we're gonna go up to B up the octave. Uh, and then, and now back down to B. Something like that. Okay, that's a lot. And how do we move all of that to the guitar? I think the best place to start is with the things that we can control, the physical components. So the first things first, we've got a volume pedal. I'm gonna start with that about halfway down. And then as the note starts to decay, I'll start to push the pedal down to increase that sustain. So like this. The second consideration that we have is we need to voice the chords in a way that we can bend one note out of the chord at a time without bending the other ones. So theoretically, if you're doing a three note grip, let's say um, something like this. You could definitely bend this bottom note, the... 
But because I, I don't have much fretboard there to bend it, it's really difficult to do. So one of the easiest things to do is to bend the lowest pitch note. So in this case, it's this note. So if this is my chord, bending this one, it's definitely gonna be the easiest and mostly because I'd have all of this fretboard to play with. If I'm bending, you know, the middle note, it's gonna bump the outside notes. And if I bend the bottom note, I'm gonna pull it right off, right off the fretboard. So bending the bottom note tends to work the best. And then a little added advantage here is that we can actually use these two fingers to support it. Lastly, we wanna make sure that we're being as accurate with the bends as possible. With pedal steel, you know, you're pressing a button and it's going from one pitch to another pitch. So we wanna make sure that you're really practicing to get these bends perfect. Sometimes you're gonna overshoot. Sometimes you're gonna undershoot. So you wanna get those as close to doing this and then you also want to practice in different spots because the tension on the strings is going to change where you do it. So, so just have at her, practice that lots. Your fingers are absolutely going to hate you. I'm not sure if that's going to focus on there. It's incredibly painful. All right, so let's break down this riff. So starting at the seventh fret with your pinky, you've got seven, seven and I'm barring those with the pinky and then playing the sixth fret with my ring finger and supporting that same string with the other two fingers. And I'm just gonna do one pluck and a bend up to eight. And then I take that whole shape, move that up to the 12th fret with the pinky, and then we do it again. So that's an E chord. So we're bending up to a G sharp and we have a B and an E. So it's basically a major chord, major second chord, well, second, and then we're bending up. And then the next section, we go up to the 14th fret on the B string, we go up a whole tone, and then 14th fret on the E string, and then rearticulate the 14th on the uh, B string, the bent 14th, and then 12th fret on the E string, and then rearticulate the B string, let go the bend, and back down to the 12th string. So what makes this pedal steel E, pedal steel-ish, pedal steel-esque, I guess, is that while this note is being bent, we're doing other things on other strings. And that's sort of that pedal steel sound, trying to make it sound as effortless as possible. Like, like this is just a mechanical band going, and now I can do whatever I want on the guitar. And let that release, that pre-bend release. If we did this in a guitar, a guitar sense, it would be this. Or something like that. But we wanna do this in the steel way, which is a bend and a hold. Kind of has that chimey sound. And then up here for the F sharp chord, we want to go up to the 13th fret on the G string. And same thing, we're doing the exact same shape that we did originally on the, on the B and the E. But now we're on F sharp. And I'm just leaving out the B string. It's just more just to, to make it sound different from this. So instead of going to this, it's just going to the two notes. So it's. And we're gonna end this by going to kind of like the bottom half of a D shape. So we've got 11 and 12. And we're gonna step the bottom one down semitones. And now I play this like this. You could go like that. Two reasons why I didn't do that. One is that uh, I wanted to bend up to that bottom note, or sorry, slide up to it to do that you have to reach like six frets. And plus this note versus this note, this one's just a little bit warmer. So I wanted that sort of nice, cozy, warm ending like that, so. All right, so let's go ahead and run this just a little bit under tempo. We're gonna start here on the seventh fret of the B.
Right on. I should probably also mention I'm on the middle pickup. I find that I tend to get the best pedal steel sound out of the middle pickup. If I use the bridge, it gets a little, I guess, I don't know. To me, that's a little bit more like the pedal steel. This one's just a bit too, a little too honky for me. So I have it on the middle pickup and I actually dial back just a touch of the top end. All right, let's take a crack at that full speed. Here we go. All right, not bad. One of the best tips I can give you for learning pedal steel on guitar is learn through osmosis. Like sit down, put on a pair of headphones and listen to as much pedal steel as possible. Bands like the Time Jumpers or anything by Vince Gill is gonna have a ton of pedal steel in it. So definitely check that stuff out. A really great way to create interest on the guitar to sound like a pedal steel is by playing through the gaps. So on guitar, you know, we often play like, we get in the habit of comping, you know? Pedal steel, they'll play on beat four to beat one of the next bar. You know, they, they, they play through the transition and that's part of the unique sound of pedal steels going from, from one chord to another. And now they do it with bends, not hammer-ons. But you get the point if you, you know, if you're playing like one, two, three, they, they play over the bar line, if that makes any sense. So try to get in the habit of playing in the spaces and taking advantage of how the instrument can go from one chord to another because that's really what pedal steel does. It's kind of the glue, the, the molten taffy that holds the music together. Now, of course, there are limitations. You can never make this truly replace a pedal steel. I've seen people come actually really close, which is kind of scary, but at some point, you just gotta pony up the cash and go out and buy one. And honestly, I did that, got quite a lot of use out of it, you know, during a couple of shows where I was playing it for like two or three months at a time. But right now it kind of sits in my basement collecting dust. So hopefully in our next house, we'll have a dedicated music space where I can leave it set up and hopefully practice a little bit more. I'm really curious to know if you guys have found better ways to play steel on the guitar. Are there better voicings? Are there better techniques? Are there, I don't know, you guys tell me, let me know what you guys have done that's been really successful. And I'm anxious to, uh, to hear some ideas. Throw it down in the comments because I will live down there and chat with you guys and uh, let's get the discussion going. I wanna, I wanna know how to, I wanna know how to beat this thing. I know it never happens, but I wanna know how to beat it. That's my goal. Well, if you guys have made it this far through the video, please feel free to subscribe. I'm gonna be posting more content like this probably every week and a half to two weeks. Hopefully, that's my, that's what I'm shooting for. So, if you guys feel like coming along for the ride, definitely subscribe down below, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. I think I'm gonna go practice. I really should. Okay, bye.